Welcome to the beautiful Grindelwald in Fierce, Switzerland. Come along with us as we fly down a mountain, go to new heights around a mountain, then go inside of a mountain, and go through a mountain on top of water. Just joining us, we are on an epic Oktoberfest road trip. We rented a car in Zurich, Switzerland, and we've been on the road for the past eight days, hitting up some very beautiful cities and towns through Switzerland and Austria, then heading up to Munich for our very first Oktoberfest. But our journey didn't stop there. We kept going, hitting up Liechtenstein, one of the world's smallest countries. Then we went back to Switzerland to keep on exploring their beautiful country. And now you're caught up to our first day in Grindelwald. Our day started off waking up to this gorgeous view outside of our Airbnb. The weather in this area can be a little bit unpredictable, so we had to make sure we had a flexible itinerary. We decided that this was gonna be our best opportunity to take the cable car and train and go up to the Jungfrau Yuck, which is considered the top of Europe. The overall journey from Grindelwald Terminal to the top of Europe takes about an hour and 36 minutes. A very handy resource when trying to plan your travel to the Jungfrau Yuck is the Jungfrau Yuck website, which not only has information on tickets, but also has webcams so you can take a look and see what the current weather conditions look like. Although I have to caution you, with an hour and 36 minute ride to the top, the weather could change. After a quick 10 minute walk from our Airbnb to the Grindelwald Terminal, we were the first passengers of the day to board the Eiger Express gondola. We had this huge cabin all to ourselves with an incredible 360 degree view. At about 6,700 feet, we transferred to the Jungfrau Railway to take us to the highest railway station in Europe, the Jungfrau Yuck. This cockwheel train is Swiss engineering at its finest. It first opened in 1912 after 16 years of construction. Although the train doesn't have scenic views because it's literally going through a mountain, it does get a really exciting 25% incline. How far can you go? <laughs> after disembarking the train, you're first greeted by a mural tribute to the workers who built the railway and all the miners who lost their lives during the mining of the tunnel. You then arrive to the Ice Palace, an ice cave that was created with picks and saws in 1930. You can walk through the man-made cave exploring all of the nooks and crannies. Make sure to bring a coat with you and walk carefully because the floor is also ice. We even had time to play a little game of hide and seek. <laughs> a local distillery also has whiskey aging in the mountain. You can find the high-end ice label whiskey around Grindelwald and Interlaken. After exploring inside, it was time to see what the weather conditions were like outside, and we quickly saw that the beautiful weather we saw on the webcam turned into a snowstorm, but we didn't let that stop us from going to the panoramic observation deck. to say it was pretty cold and we needed to warm up. 
Luckily, there were a few different restaurants offering warm soups, coffee, tea, and hot cocoa. The weather conditions were not good to do any more mountain activities for the day, so we decided to take a train ride down the mountain to visit a local brewery in Interlaken. The train ride took us about two hours and offered spectacular views of Wingen and Lauterbrunnen. I highly recommend taking the journey if you have time. In our last video, we talked a little about the valley town of Interlaken. The town offers a good mix of city and farmlands. The brewery we decided to go to was about a 20 minute walk through farms. After grabbing a few pints of Rugenbra and some dinner, it was time to go back to our Airbnb to rest up for the next day in Grindelwald. The weather forecast for the day looked promising, so we decided to do our next set of mountain activities in the Grindelwald Fierst area, which was about 30 minutes away. From this same Jungfrau website that I showed you earlier, you can see all of the adventure options that the Grindelwald Fierst area has to offer, along with pricing. I'll post the link to the site in the description. While you can purchase any of the activities separately, we decided to purchase the adventure package because it offered a choice of several of the activities on the mountains at a discounted price. Like the previous day, our second day in Grindelwald started out with a short walk, this time going to a different station for the Grindelwald Fierce Gondola, not to be confused with the Eiger Express. Once again, the views from the gondola were stunning and definitely worth the ride. As we were ascending, the clouds began to move in and we were unsure if the weather predictions of a nice day were going to hold true. But by the time we arrived to the top, we were above the clouds. So where does this gondola take you? To the fierce cliff walk. It's a bridge that's attached to the side of a mountain. Don't worry if you're afraid of walking on the bridge, there's also a restaurant and an open observation deck just above the bridge. Also, there's a fantastic hike that I'll tell you about in just a minute. But first, let's explore the cliff walk. From the cliff walk, you can take a hike to Bacalpsi Lake. The hike takes about two hours round trip to complete. While the hike itself is not too difficult, it was pretty muddy, so you may want to wear shoes that you don't mind getting dirty. The payoff at the top is a lake overlooking the Alps. And as you can tell in the photos, the forecast held true and it ended up being a beautiful sunny day. After a quick lunch at the restaurant by the cliff walk, we took the gondola back down the mountain one stop. This is where our first activity from the adventure package took place, the mountain cart. Basically, you take a tricycle down a mountain. It was really fun, but a few words of warning. It was much bumpier than expected. If you get migraines easily, you might want to avoid this activity or be sure to take some headache medicine beforehand. Also, it goes really quick. It's not easy to go slow and enjoy the beautiful scenery or take pictures. And lastly, the brakes were not the best. After returning our mountain carts, we then switched to trotty bikes, which is a scooter that goes down the rest of the mountain. Just like the mountain cart, it was fast, and you have to pull over to take any pictures. But look at this view! You can also walk down the path for free. 
so you don't have to pay for an activity and you can still see the amazing sights. In fact, we even walked our scooters down part of the way just so we could take in all of the beauty. We had one more activity planned after finishing our trotty bikes, Glacier Canyon. And as the name suggests, it's a melting glacier waterfall running through a canyon in the mountains. There's even netting that you can walk across to get a really good feeling of how powerful the water is that's running through the canyon. Now this activity was not part of the adventure package, so if you're planning to do this, it will be an extra cost. After a long, exciting day, we spent our last night in Grindelwald on our patio of the Airbnb, enjoying each other's company and reminiscing over the highlights of our trip. The next morning, we would be heading to our final stop on this epic road trip, Lucerne, Switzerland. One thing that I had to make sure I tried before leaving Switzerland was milk from a vending machine, where you could get fresh milk 24 seven. The machines I saw on YouTube all offered a single cup of milk. However, the milk machine that we found only offered a liter at a time. Luckily, I had a liter water bottle handy for the job. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's go back to Lucerne. This was the one night on our trip, we decided to splurge a little on our accommodations, staying in Hotel Chateau Gouche. Gouche started out as an inn, but expanded in 1879. It then burned down and was rebuilt in 1901. It's modeled after Neuschwanstein Castle in Bavaria. In 1884, this really cool railroad was added to make it easier for guests to access the hotel. We took advantage of the little time we had in Lucerne and walked around the city, ate, and shopped. One of the main attractions is the Chapel Bridge, a wooden footbridge spanning the river diagonally. Interior paintings on the bridge date back to the 17th century. However, there was a fire in 1993 that destroyed a lot of the paintings. After one last pint of local beer and a leisurely walk by the river back to our hotel, we went to bed for our early morning flight from Zurich back to Washington, D.C. to wrap up our epic Oktoberfest road trip. Now, I thought I would share some of our final trip stats with you. We ended up driving 636 miles through Switzerland, Austria, Germany, and Liechtenstein. The highest elevation we reached was the Jungfrau Juck at 11,300 feet. The total length of our trip was 11 days, and the final cost, all in, ended up being about $2,900 per person, not including airfare because we used airline miles. But having the adventure of a lifetime with your friends is priceless. Thanks so much for watching. Please keep coming back for more ideas for your next vacation.